Hi and welcome back to Bike Rider TV. Today the Bike Rider team are here at Rico Taupo Motorsport Park with a trio of exclusive and gorgeous Italian MV Augusta F4 1000s. Now before you pinch me or slap me next time you see me at the track, lots of people have already done it today. Introducing on my left there, we have a 2005 F4 Tamburini. This one here is a 2006 CC. It's the only one in New Zealand. It's one of 100 ever built. This one here is the MV Augusta F4 312R. This is probably more common than the other ones, true, but this one has got so much really cool bling put on it that it's unbelievable. The nice thing is, the owner, David Hands, said we can take them for a spin on the Taupo track. I'd like to talk you through some of the components on this uh, 312R that's been uh, imported from the USA and then modified uh, component by component, working from the front to the back. We upgraded the forks to uh, FGR 800 Olin Superbike forks, matching those up to 108 millimeter spaced uh, Brembo Superbike monoblocks uh, with 320mm full floating Superbike discs. Uh, we had to replace the triple clamps because the diameter of the forks of the Olin's units are different to the standard ones on the F4. Moving further back, uh, carbon air intakes, electrical covers at the front, into the air box. It's got a BMC uh, air filter into a uh, an engine unit that's controlled by a Microtech ECU back here in the seat unit. The rear shock is from Olin's as well. There was uh, only five of these made. Uh, they were custom made for the Italian race team who were um, formatting their bike in 2008 for their uh, Superbike team. And they put two aside and sent them over to the USA, uh, the Superbike uh, rear shock. Uh, first of the TTX for the MVs. They only made five of these, like I say, the, the good thing about them is that they were going to go on the Fast by Ferracci 312R race bikes, but they unfortunately ran out of money in 2008, didn't campaign their bike. They became uh, available. Uh, one went to Portugal and one's in New Zealand. Awesome. It's got a carbon fibre tank from MV Corsa. The exhaust system is stainless steel to the midway point where it's got a, a titanium link pipe onto a titanium slash cart MV Corsa exhaust. The frame plates are in magnesium as is the swing arm. Uh, we've got MV Corsa uh, billet rear sets. There's a Superbike radiator one piece in the front. These bikes run quite hot. It's ridden on the road quite often, so we wanted to manage the, the cooling for the, for the bike in general. Um, but that's the significant components that have been placed on this bike uh, to, to upgrade it to something that we uh, want to share and enjoy with all our friends out there on uh, Bike Rider TV. This one is uh, the F4CC, otherwise known as the Claudio Castiglione. Uh, Mr. Castiglione commissioned this motorcycle um, from his company MV Augusta, and the story goes that he only wanted to make one of them, but then looked at it and thought, this is maybe too good to keep to myself. We're going to make a hundred of these units. And uh, this one was originally purchased by a gentleman in Florida, in the USA. Uh, and we imported it privately into New Zealand. Uh, none were sold originally in New Zealand and they're no longer available new. Uh, the components on this bike uh, somewhat resemble the, uh, well, the Tamburini and the 312R. Uh, it's upgraded suspension, uh, not the Olin's units, but uh, Marzocchi forks. In the back is a Saks rear shock. Uh, they're well known for Formula One suspension. It's a good unit. Working from the front of the bike to the back again, it's, it's lavish with carbon fibre, uh, air intakes, uh, air box a lot of billet components on this bike. 
They say that 90% of the components on this one were uh, very similar in design but unique to the CC. So the bike uh, here on the right hand side of me uh, would have had a lot of alloy cast parts. These ones they went to the trouble of doing them in bullet. Uh, so once again it's magnesium and titanium all over the shop and it's like a, a bit of a display for some of the exotic components of the periodic table which is always good fun. So that's the CC, this is number 13 of 100. Um, lovely bike to ride but typically only used on the road. Well the F4CC being what it is, it's um, one of those things where you get to live your dream. I'd like to thank my wife Melanie for allowing me to park this motorcycle inside the house. Most guys would like to have that privilege I'm sure, uh, it's something that Melanie allows me to do and uh, thanks very much for that. So yeah, if you think about it, maybe ask, extend your garage into your house. I endorse it. Last but not least over here, we've got the Tamburini, uh, one of 300 made. This is number 122. Uh, it was first purchased again in the USA, a uh, couple of owners out there, then we imported it privately into New Zealand. Uh, just to finish off, I suppose, we're going to mention the horsepower of these bikes just to make that sort of relative for you. Uh, on a dynamometer, this one's at about 157.8 horsepower. Uh, 312R came back at 182.5. We haven't had the ability to put this fella on the dyno yet, but word on the street when they were building it was that they were uh, shooting for 200 horsepower at the rear wheel. Um, so the, the slight differences on this Tamburini, apart from the rather exotic uh, sets of uh, carbon fibre for it, is the uh, exhaust is a little bit heavier, made of stainless, and it's called an RG3, a relatively open exhaust. Uh, the ECU in this one is quite different to the other two. Uh, this one has an Epron chip, the other two have um, a more advanced ECU for the fuel management system. Uh, just one thing to close off, I suppose, is that the, uh, the Tamburini and the CC have what are called a torque shift system. Now this allows the performance of the bike, especially regarding torque, to be improved significantly in the lower rev range. And then as it builds up to 10,000 RPM, what it does is that it lifts a set of velocity stacks off the induction system, allows it to breathe free at that higher rev range, and you get that little bit of a push at the top end. on track you'll have to read bike rider magazine to find out